Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. Thanks for joining us tonight. And as usual, no shortage of topics to get into tonight. The Steelers, three days in the books. We'll talk about some of the guys who are due contracts. We'll also talk about some of the players who need to step up. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is going to be the Pirates, who have a complete free fall now, 2 and 14 since the All Star break, going nowhere. And we'll talk about what should be a proper response from the management. Here to do that is your panel. Left to right on your television screen, we have Jason Mackey, outstanding beat writer with the Pirates, and a ton of hockey knowledge. In the middle, Christmas in July, Chris Muller, who's brought it out. He's festive today uh, from the PM show, 2 to 6. Every day on 93.7 The Fan and Paul Zeiss from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and the Paul Zeiss program on The Fan. All right, so we'll get right to it now. Pirates have completely tanked here, it looks like. They're not going to be a player. They're not going to be involved in the trade deadline unless they get rid of people. Jason Mackey, what should be the proper response from management based on what we've seen to this point? Well, Neil Huntington talked a couple weeks ago about having to respect this club and what they had done. I believe that was either at the final day before the deadline or close to it. And I think the same applies when things are going poorly. You have to um, sort of operate in conjunction with what your team has done, which is absolutely nothing. I mean, at this point, you have to listen and possibly trade Felipe Vasquez. I think you have to listen and possibly trade Corey Dickerson, Francisco Liriano, Melky Cabrera, um, Starling Marte at this point. I don't think you have to trade him, but I'd certainly be listening on any and all players. If Neil Huntington can use this opportunity to reset the Pirates for the next couple of years or at least come close to doing it, I think it's incumbent on management to do it. I, I would have set a small strategy or maybe even stand pat before this you know, post-break free fall or even if it would have been half as bad. But this has been really, really, really bad. Uh, to me, you need to sell off all appreciable assets and try to get something. Well, I think the real question is what is not an asset? that what, What's nailed down? Josh Bell, Brian Reynolds? Like start, this that's pretty is pretty much it. Yeah. That, so that's where it gets depressing for me. And that's kind of the thrust of, of my thought on this here. They have done a couple of things. They have made it easy on Neil Huntington, as he acknowledged earlier today. He's going to sell. They're going to sell off assets. It's pretty obvious uh, on his radio show. He said that. And what it's done for me, the lifelong Pirates fan, has just been another kick in the face when everybody else in the division, but specifically the Cardinals in this case, get started with winning. The Pirates get busy losing. And just the fact that they have two guys that all of us probably would generally agree on are nailed down, nobody, no offers, we think these are building blocks. Two of them. That is a sad commentary on where they're at right now as a franchise. It's pathetic. Well, you could probably throw Kevin, Kevin Newman into that too, maybe. Can you, add, though? Add, add a third guy. Well, I'm mean, just saying. I mean, to me, here's the thing. My question is, how do you define management? Because <laughs> to me, I, I think I go a way above Neil Huntington's head here and say Bob Nutting is the guy that needs to, to, to make the first moves. Um, and that obviously might be a different topic for a different day. But to me, why are we going, you know, why are, why are they going to allow Neil Huntington to continue down the course that he's gone here? This is year 12 now. It's not year two. It's not year four. It's not, and it's, and it's four More years, importantly, it's several years removed from their last good season. It's four years removed from their last postseason. And they've spun they, their wheels. Right, exactly. And it, if you look at it's it. It's done worse than spun their wheels. They've gone backwards. They've played 47% baseball since they're getting smacked in the wild card game by the Cubs. So to me, if you really take a look at that, how many more years do we have to have of this how guy's long is his contract? philosophies, this guy's, you know, pitching philosophies, this guy's scouting philosophies, all these other things? To me, if you really want to make changes, right, trading uh, Vasquez and trading uh, Cabrera and this kind of stuff, all it's going to do is basically just delay the inevitable. Here's, a, here's another question, That's Paul. All. Here's another question. How many more games in a row would they have to lose before Clint Hurdle's job might be on the line? If How many they are left in the season? No, I'm dead serious. So they're two and fourteen <laughs> That's right now. And they're you two and fourteen. Your own question, Chris. If it's this, about contract status. This, I know. Well, that I, it was being rhetorical. Neil Huntington will be here for the duration of this contract, and so will Clint Hurdle. And is my bet. But that's not If they're good two enough. and twenty-five, and they're two and fourteen enough. right now, they lose eleven more games in a row. Would that get Clint Hurdle fired? How about this question? Why not rebuild and tell everyone it's a rebuild, Paul? A lot of teams have done it. The Rangers and hockey did it. Everyone, even in New York, said okay, and they're doing it. What about a rebuild and just be honest? 
Well, I think the, the, the problem there is that for the last two or three years, you should have been doing a rebuild, <laughs> and you've been trying to tell everybody that you were, you know, uh, basically you were competitive and that uh, everybody was crazy and that projections are not right and all this other stuff. Now you're going to tell fans, hey, guess what? You've had four really kind of years just in the tank, and uh, we're going to sell off everything uh, uh, that, that's valuable, and it might take us another three years to get good. I, I just don't know if this front office has the credibility with its fan base anymore to pull that off. Bobby, oh, you it doesn't. It doesn't yeah, okay. at all. They couldn't pull that off in a million. Can you imagine the eye rolls, Paul, and if, if they said we're going to go full scale, like Astros level rebuild? I agree with you. I think it's the best decision from a baseball standpoint. There's not enough assets in the minor leagues. I mean, you could really wait, make a bold move, but they just that's going to get people vomiting in the streets if they do it. So wait, already? we all agree, we all agree though that a rebuild is something we would do, but we also all agree that they're not going anywhere Neil Huntington specifically for this the purposes of this discussion until his contracts up. Do do any of us here think Neil Huntington is the guy to oversee a rebuild? Because I don't. But no, that, but that no, was you my go point. in a completely different direction. That was exactly direction. my point. Yeah, that was exactly my point. Do you think they're going to do It just feels like such a ridiculous pipe dream given the way they've conducted business so far. I feel like it's almost not worth talking about. It would be great in a real, normal, sane world if we could say Neil Huntington had his chance. He ended 20 years of losing. Now his team is failing and floundering. He's fired. The manager's fired. Full-on rebuild. We all know that the way that business is done so far with this franchise that we've seen, that isn't going to happen because they are not going to send those guys away while they're still collecting. Period. Next question, Chris Archer, once again awful today, six runs in the first inning, he got ahead of hitters, he hit hitters, he fell behind, next thing you know, it's 6 nothing. So, uh, <laughs> Jason Mackey, when you look at this situation, he has an option coming up. I mean, I haven't seen anything that makes me think he can be at all a contributor next year. And this is not a small sample size, Jason, this is now basically a year and a half of this, or at least a year going on a year, we've not seen anything. What do they do with him? Would you pick it up? Um, I really like dealing with Chris Archer, being around the baseball club every day. He's a great dude. He's, he's fun to talk to. He's very intelligent, and I would never pick up the option if I were the Pirates. I mean, from a baseball standpoint, the way he's pitched here, I couldn't do it. I would, I would try to find something else, somewhere else to spend that money. I don't think they're getting the return on it. However, do I think they're going to? Yeah. I do, because if you don't pick up his option and you let Chris Archer walk for nothing, they are going to get skewered. You are going to hear more about Austin Meadows and Tyler Glass now than we have heard to this point, which has been a lot. And if they lose, if they, they let Archer walk and, and don't either get anything for him or just basically say this is a total failure on our part, they know they're going to get crushed. I would think that that's the obvious thing. They're going to pick up the option with the intent of trading him would seem to, to where be, I, for to, what to any but to, okay so to your point I agree yeah, if you can Chris I mean I think they're going to pick up the option and just say does anybody want this guy a place <laughs> with deeper pockets where you can take a chance on him because he, here's the thing Chris Archer's velocities all like kind of the, the spin numbers and the advanced metrics by which we define is a pitcher still have it in his arm he still seems to have it so it could be a matter of coaching or the place he's at or the way he's being you know told to pitch you don't think that there's a bigger market team out there that might say, we can rehab him, we'll give you some mid-level guys. Yeah, I think no, that's what they're looking that's for. Fair. See, that's to fair. Me, to me, I think the bottom line with that is you are probably going to get more for him if you were to do it in the next three or four days. It, then, it, then sign him, you know, an option year <laughs> that's going to cost, what, $9 million or whatever it is they're going to have to pay him. I don't know that what the market would be, especially if he continues to do what he's doing. If there's a team that's desperate enough for pitching, and to Chris's point, it looks like Chris Archer still has something in his arm. They feel like, look, we can get this guy from not much, but we, we, you know, we give up maybe a prospect or whatever. We get him, and he, we bring him here, and we coach him and teach him how to pitch again. Maybe we've got a guy that can help us down the stretch. To me, I, I just think that if you're the Pirates, and this is where it starts with everything, with we're talking about the rebuild with Neil Huntington, with all of it, okay? If you're the Pirates, if you're going to start making decisions – based on baseball, you might have a chance. But the problem is, like we're talking, 
They traded a whole bunch of stuff for him. They have him under control. It was like this great coup that they were able to get him last year. And those are going to come into consideration at the end of the year when they decide whether or not they want to pick up the option. Because if the bottom line is they shouldn't pick up the option, they should try and trade him for whatever they can get over the next three days and say, you know what, we screwed up, we'll do better. All right, we got to take a break. We'll continue the Pirate Conversation coming up. Later, some Steelers stuff as they have begun training camp. But First, I want to remind you, what's the newest Chevy store in the region? If you're answering it, the answer is number one, Cochrane, Chevrolet, and Cranberry. And if you haven't been there yet, now is the time to go. You can get some incredible grand opening offers on all your favorite Chevy cars, trucks, and crossovers. Plus, number one, Cochrane's exclusively, clearly better car buying experience. It's the season of savings now at the new number one, Cochrane, Chevrolet, Cranberry on Perry Highway, formerly Kenny Ross. Or visit CochranChevrolet.com. We return with more Pirate Talk next. The number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 